In this video, we're going to learn how to sound design fire using Pure Data and Max MSP. Our goal is to resound design this scene from Dark Souls 3. We'll cover the psych and creature scream sounds in future videos. In most of these sound design tutorials, we'll be referencing Andy Farnell's book called Designing Sound. I referenced it heavily for this fire tutorial in particular. I highly recommend this book for anybody who is interested in sound design. What I found useful about this book is that it deeply covers the physics of the sounds. The book doesn't simply throw your fire patch and move on. It deeply analyzes the physics of fire. And through that analysis, we can synthesize fire sounds from scratch using pure data. Although this book only uses pure data, it's pretty easy to translate the example patches to Max from my own experience. Last thing I'll mention about this book is that it's a bit pricey, but it is almost 700 pages. Here's some suggestions on how to ethically get access to the book. Okay, let's get started. You most likely experience being in front of a bonfire. What do you remember about that sound? Crackle, rumbly sound. So fire doesn't just make a singular sound. It consists of multiple components. In the designing sound book, Farnell focuses on the sounds of lapping, hissing, and crackling. Lapping is that roaring sound or low woofing noise, which is the result of a gas burning. Hissing is caused by the water in the wood heating up and turning into a gas that escapes. Crackling happens when gases build up in a sealed cavity and the pressure increases to a point where there is an explosion. In addition, thermal expansion of the wood leads to the crackles. So the crackling that we hear from the bonfire is, as the book describes, a short, sharp explosion, often in wood, coal, or other solids where a piece of material disintegrates under pressure. Let's first have a look at the example patches from the book, and then we'll alter them to re-sound design this scene. Let's start with the hissing sound. As you'll come to realize, sound design will mostly come down to shaping or sculpting a white noise. So we got ourselves a hiss sound already, but as Farnell states, hissing in a fire comes and goes, usually in short bursts with silence in between. So we'll need a random low frequency signal for modulation. Noise is a random signal that contains every frequency, so we can create a random low frequency signal out of it by using a low pass filter. Okay, it's getting closer, but we need something that's more of a sudden loud burst with silence in between. We can take the square of the modulating signal in order to expand the dynamic range of this low frequency modulator. So when we take a square of a normalized signal, the higher values close to 1.0 are unaltered, while lower values become much quieter. And we need to scale up the modulator signal by a lot since the average level is now lower. We can further expand the dynamic range by squaring again if we wanted to. One final touch-up is to add a high-pass filter because there is not much low frequency in the fire hiss sound. We need to save the low end for the lapping sound, which we'll get to in a bit. Okay, let's move on to the crackle sound design. The approach is similar to the previous sound. We again have noise as a sound source and for modulation. So we have a noise going into a times tilde object, and the gain is controlled by this signal chain. Let's have a closer look. We have a line tilde object here that's generating an envelope that goes from 1.0 to 0.0 in 20 milliseconds. Very short. Let's see how and when the envelope is generated or triggered. We're again creating a slow moving random source by using the low pass filter here. And this time, instead of using it as a modulator source, we can convert it into a control signal by using the M tilde object, which provides the RMS value of the input signal and outputs a control rate float between 0.0, .0 and 100, which represents the decibel amplitude. Next, we have the Moses object. So what's happening here is, if the input value is above 49, that value goes to the right outlet. And if it's below 50, then it goes to the left outlet. There's another Moses object in this chain, and the left inlet is connected to the button that's triggering the envelope generation. For example, if the random value is 50.5, it's above 50, so it'll go to the right outlet of the first Moses object. And it's below 51, so it'll be outputted from the right outlet, which results in a trigger. 
Therefore, the envelope is generated whenever the random float value is above 49 and below 51. Okay, so we got the timing and the envelope of the crackling down, but the issue is that it's tonally the same. So let's simply add a bandpass filter for the noise sound source, and we'll use the random trigger to output random frequency value for the filter cutoff. And the decay time is also randomized now. And I think Farnell added that square law technique here to make the envelope closer to a natural one that we hear in the real world. Finally, let's create the lapping sound, which is that roaring low roofing noise that results from a gas burning. So we're focusing on the low frequency around 30 Hz, and we'll apply a good amount of resonance. Then we scale that up by 100. And we cut down all the frequencies below 25 using a high pass filter, which is inaudible, but it can have an effect on the signal, mainly the available dynamic range. Then we need to apply clip tilde to make sure that the signal is at a reasonable level. And as a bonus, it will introduce distortion, which is appropriate here. Finally, an extra high pass filter is needed for removing DC offset. All right, let's listen to these together. So let's see how I use these techniques to re-sound design this scene. So the patch looks rather different from what we just created, but the techniques are the same. So let's have a closer look to see what I mean. It's important to keep in mind that a lot of the decisions that I made was just following my years and adjusting the parameters accordingly. Here's a low rumbling fire drum for dramatic effect. As we can see, this is the technique of applying filter to the noise and then scaling it up before it is clipped. And I have a low pass filter here also, probably just for further sculpting. And this is similar to the squaring of the signal that we did earlier with the hissing sound, but I'm using sick tilde for a different tone. I don't know where I got the idea to use sick tilde instead of noise tilde, but it does give me the sound that I wanted. And then I did more scaling, clipping, and filtering for further sculpting. Again, I ended up with these parameter values through trial and error and following my years. And these right here are the sustained crackling layers. Again, I implemented the technique of applying filter, scaling, high pass, and clipping. And I have two separate signal chains for creating layers with slightly different timbres. And I'm using those layers to create the random crackles right here. I delay by 3 seconds just to make the random crackles timbre differ from the sustained crackling layers. And this is where I have that random envelope trigger, but as you can see, I didn't use that fancy M tilde plus Moses technique and just simply used metro and random. The key is to randomize the metro interval parameter. And it looks like I didn't even randomize the decay time. If I were to redo the fire for the demo reel, I would definitely randomize this. And again, more filtering is done to sculpt the sound. The crackling layers are going into a reverb, and I widen the stereo image of the sustained crackling layers by using delay. This is known as the Haas effect. And the low rumble also has reverb applied, but it's bypassing the Haas effect because I want it to be mono. And that's pretty much it. In Max, I did use external plugins for compressor, saturator, and reverb. So let's listen again to the fire soundscape from the demo reel. And here's the pure data version, which does not use any VSTs. I hope you found the first video of this new sound design series helpful. Always remember to follow your ears and have fun when sound designing. 
Okay, I'll see you in the next tutorial where I'll most likely talk about how to design the wish sound. And it won't be seven months from now, don't worry. Alright, take care.